Hello everyone, I am Torior and welcome to my newest Hearts of Iron 4 video. Today we are going to play as Poland and obtain the Bearer of Artillery achievement. This achievement is modeled by a real life situation where Polish soldiers found a bear, adopted him and trained him to help them and he was actually carrying munitions. You can get that bear in Hearts of Iron 4, but it's pretty convoluted. Before we start though, a message from a sponsor for this video. This video is sponsored by Heroes of Might and Magic Era of Chaos, a free-to-play strategy mobile game derived from the classic Heroes of Might and Magic 3, which is of course a fan favorite. Now this is not a mobile version of Heroes of Might and Magic 3, it is a different game, but it takes place in the same world, features the same iconic characters, builds upon the storyline, features the same factions and the same units, although redesigned. And it also makes use of the soundtrack of Heroes of Might and Magic 3, which actually got me a bit of a nostalgic feeling when I was trying this game out. Combat is real-time and you set up your units in a formation, they fight on their own and you can help them by deploying spells at key moments. When I was trying this game out, I found that formations matter a whole lot. For example, sending my cavalry around back to deal with enemy ranged troops let me easily win a battle that I lost when just, you know, brute forcing and attacking head-on. So, if this looks like something you would enjoy, make sure to check the game out by clicking the link in the description below. And of course remember that doing so supports this channel. Alright, let's get going. I'm in mode historical focuses, regular difficulty as always, Poland. Why do you always play as Poland, Torior, you might ask? Well, that is because I am Polish, I live in Poland and I love Poland. Also, I'm gonna share a little bit of a personal story with you. See, when I was a little baby, my great-grandmother used to take care of me quite a lot and she would sing to me to calm me down. Now if you don't care just skip like a minute ahead. But she didn't sing me regular lullabies, no, she would sing me war songs. And that's not songs about war, that's songs that people actually sang in Poland under German occupation say. So imagine this, I'm a little baby, can't talk yet, lying in my crib and so on, and my great grandmother is calming me down with a song that goes like this. I'm not gonna sing it today, I barely remember the melody, but I can recite some of the lyrics. My ze spalonych wsi, my z głodujących miast, za głód, za krew, za lata łez, już zemsty nadszedł czas. That's just the first verse, and it roughly translates to We of the burned down villages, we of the starving cities, for hunger, for blood, for years of tears, the time of vengeance has come. The song then goes on, but I guess you don't need to hear the whole thing. That's just one personal story. I do have many more, but uh, I think I'll spare you for now. Let's get going. Poland, yay! Our first focus, of course, has to be to strengthen the Polish state. And I didn't talk about what we need to do to get the achievement. This is pretty convoluted. You need to fire a specific event, and for that you need to be at war with Italy and occupy some of their territory. You need to be Poland. You need to be non-aligned. This is going to be the most problematic one. You need to not be in a faction with the Soviet Union and own some land in Iran, uh, specifically uh, Hamadan, I think. You either need to have this or someone in your faction needs to have this. And then when you get your soldiers in Italy, uh, the event with the bear commander should fire. First, in order to get to Iran, I think I'll have to dispose of the Soviet Union. Let's start working on it. Research. Some research some production. I think I've done mass assault quite a lot recently, so let's do superior firepower for a change. As for construction, let's do some civilian factories. And just to do infantry equipment for now. We might do support companies, but that comes much later. We don't have the industry for that yet. And let's train up some troops. We have 40, let's get 80 more. We're gonna be switching them to infantry and training them up, of course. All right, that's about it. Let's go. We're gonna keep the mountaineers and the infantry and the rest is gonna be switched to infantry. And let's train up the ones that are not yet fully trained. Polish militarism. We can approach this in a variety of ways. We could even do the Baltic Alliance, but I don't think that will benefit us too much. I think I'll try to use the Axis. We have enough political power to hire someone. Let's hire Xavier Czernicki, who is an old guard guy which is almost as good as a silent workhorse, but we don't have a silent workhorse. The most difficult part about this is that we have to stay non-aligned. Spanish Civil War. Next up, Polish Revanchism. This is a very important focus because it will let us attack Romania quickly. Why Romania? Well, 
that's my standard go-to for Poland nowadays. We need to take out Romania and Czechoslovakia early to weaken Germany and strengthen ourselves. Let's also go to free trade for the research and construction and production boosts. Free trade is the best. Continuing the superior firepower doctrine. We're about to finish Polish revanchism. Yeah, with that we'll only need the world tension to be 10% to justify war goals. This should happen around um, the Chinese United Front times. I'm going to conserve political power a little bit, because once we start fighting we'll need to boost our war support and switch to war economy. Get an infantry expert and maybe an offense expert, so we'll need quite a lot of political power for that. anti commandant pact. Sure, why not? Let's modify our infantry template to not have any support companies, and switch all that cavalry to infantry, and exercise them. Let's also promote Władysław Anders to be our field marshal. Charismatic offensive organizer. It will soon be time to start researching some infantry buffs. Ah, time for the next research slot. Hindenburg incident and the Chinese United Front forms, which means we'll soon have enough world tension to start justifying our war goal. Time for some army buffs. Stuff is about to go down, 10% world tension, we can start justifying our war goal. And it's just going to be one against Romania. We could theoretically fit in two without guarantees, but it's tricky and we don't really need to do that. So, Northern Transylvania will be mine. 175 days. Also, the next research slot is available, so let's do radio. Poland first for some extra stability. Ideological fanaticism complete. Now let's move towards the next research slot with the cyclometer. By the time we're done with it, we should have the Czechoslovakian factories. Time to start setting up some orders. We're going to set our guys up like this because we want to focus our attack on Czechoslovakia, on this part. You guys go here and you just secure the Romanian border for now. Nationalist Spain wins. Now I don't have enough guns, but I think we'll manage somehow. Our justification is ready, let's declare war immediately. Now, why did I set my troops up like this? I want Czechoslovakia to leave their fortified positions and move a little bit into my territory, and then I can strike back. Czechoslovakia has joined. They're moving in. Just a little bit. Come on, can you move in a bit more? Hmm, that's disappointing. I guess I could have given them a bit more space. But this in itself might be sufficient for our purposes. The trick here is to assault Czechoslovakia very hard in this bit here so that we can cut their forces in half. It can be a bit difficult because this is difficult terrain to assault. Get in position and attack. Also let's do war propaganda quickly so that we can switch to war economy, hire an infantry expert, an offense expert. Okay, we'll need 154 war economy so let's go to limited conscription as well. Ideally I'd like them to get a little bit more into our territory but maybe I didn't leave them enough room. Nevertheless, this should theoretically work. Ah, see? Like this. You, there. You stop them from reinforcing. You stop them from reinforcing. And we should be able to cut some of their forces off in here. By attacking this army, I can prevent them from accessing this province and thus let our guys cut them off. Hopefully. Apparently, I was a bit too slow. No matter, maybe we can get through here. I was hoping this would go a bit better, but we are about to break the enemy resistance in several places. We now have enough war support to go to war economy. We couldn't do that before because we're not fascist or communist, so we need to actually be at war with a country that has quite a lot of factories. Improved computing machine. See, this is perfect. We just acquired a province that is not fully surrounded by enemy units. We can use that to our advantage. We're going to try and, you know, cut them off. Maybe even get to Prague. This opening is exactly what we needed. Now let's just hope that they cannot reinforce it in time. Ah, see? Looking good. These guys can bring us victory. These guys are now cut from supply, and all of them will also be cut from supply in a moment. And yes, these guys are now as good as dead. Well, the main part that contains their capital is pretty much left undefended. Oh, looks like there are actually no troops in here. Well, no, there's one in Prague, but... They're not gonna hold out for long. Actually, they left Prague. That was pretty stupid, wasn't it? I'll just take it. Are you gonna surrender now? Almost. Just one more victory point. Like this one. And that should be it for Czechoslovakia. Thank you very much. I will not take everything. Why is that? Well, the answer is pretty simple. We don't want Germany to kill us. So we're going to leave Sudetenland and Eastern Sudetenland. I'm not completely sure that I need to leave Eastern Sudetenland, but it's just one factory, so we'll do it just to be safe. 
I do definitely need to leave Sudetenland. We're only losing four total factories, uh, but it's peace of mind that the Germans won't kill us. I could puppet them, theoretically, I would get a bit of production from them in the meantime, but it's not worth uh, the risk. That's it for Czechoslovakia. They are left with a bit of territory. Now, time to readjust our orders and deal with Romania. This bit is not completely defended, maybe we'll get there in time. Even if not, we should be able to beat Romania now that all our forces will be focusing on them. Front lines drawn, activate the orders, go! Here, there. If I can get into some Romanian territory here quickly, uh, that would give us a very nice advantage, similar to what we did in Czechoslovakia. Looks like it's not gonna be that easy, but we do have a chance. And yes, we got through. Atomic Physics Institute, and now we can do the fifth research slot because we have enough factories. Continuing to go around the Romanian forces. This might not seem like much, but we can actually access their capital from the back, maybe, and we're surely disorganizing their defense. And see, their defense was disorganized because they had to cover a large area, and these armies were able to break through as well. We do have way more troops than they do, and when they don't have this good defensive terrain up here, we will destroy them, it's just a matter of time. Let's increase our stability, it is worryingly low. Bucharest is actually defended, not very well, but it is. Hmm, in retrospect I probably should have sent some more troops down south, but uh, this is good enough. Let's just rush Bucharest with everyone. Romania should be surrendering any day now, we've taken Bucharest. Come on. Might need some more victory points. Nope, here it goes. Now we could puppet Romania for manpower, but Romania is a tricky case because they have some territorial disputes with the Soviets and Hungary. So let's just take all states. Perfect. Now let's get ready to defeat everyone else. I'm gonna design a small division with just one unit, call it Tiny. We're going to use that to deploy lots and lots of troops. Our army that we used to conquer Romania is actually all going over here to Gdańsk or Danzig if you prefer. You're gonna do some traveling soon. Oh and uh, let's buy some steel from the Germans, we want to strengthen the Germans, we're gonna be friends soon. Let's do the bomb and research say the better guns. Now we are going to exploit the fact that Mr. Chamberlain is apparently not that bright. I'm gonna improve relations with him. Oh, and uh, research atomic technology, because we have a bonus to that. We're not gonna use nukes, nukes are crap, but this speeds up research. I could use some more convoys. The fourth international, France and Britain announce alliance, Germany takes to that land that we so kindly left for them. See, now Britain likes me. They feel protective, they wanna protect me from the Germans. Not that they're really gonna do anything, but what we can do is ask them for docking rights and ask them for military access. Finally, ask them to join their faction. We are now a member of the Allies, temporarily. I think it's time we took out Britain. It will make it easier to become friends with Adolf. And we need to be friends with Adolf. There you go. Garrison Britain, please. So if I did not join the faction, we would have to do everything here manually. And of course, I forgot to select a focus. Let's do defensive focus. See, now that we are in the Allies, we can't just justify war goals on random people. Because the United Kingdom is democratic, that overrides us being unaligned. See, we're not gonna stay in the Allies for very long. Probably should have asked France for military access as well. Ah, oh, never mind. Let's send some to France. Let's send some to Canada. South Africa and the Raj. Doesn't really matter where we go exactly, there just needs to be some fighting. And Malaya. You go over to New Zealand. And Australia. And you secure the Soviet border. Yeah, 24 units of this template. Not gonna do much. Germany claims memo. Not a problem. We can deal with Germany. Could use more convoys though. Prepare for the next war. That's what we're doing right now, isn't it? Maybe get some more generals. Are all of you in position? No, not yet. It's gonna take you a while. Better guns researched. Building the better guns. You will take Lithuania for me. Let's switch them to regular infantry. Advanced computing machine. We don't know what focus the Germans are doing. Let's observe it. Uh, they should be doing Motov Ribbentrop now, which makes it a good moment to exit the Allies. But yeah, Motov Ribbentrop, which means they are doing Danzig War now, which also means it's time to exit the Allies. Let's leave a faction. Now, some of our troops will try to return home. You guys already have military access, so we don't have to go anywhere. And you, I will just halt. Unpause and halt everyone. France is guaranteeing our independence. 
And so is the UK. Let's not destroy them immediately. We want to do some fighting. Our troops got exiled. Not an issue. Start justifying a war goal on Lithuania. Ooh, that's a long time. They have a guy that makes it longer. Okay, let's do Lithuania. They should guarantee them. Yep, there's a guarantee. Let's do standardization of equipment. It's gonna take us some time. Let's also justify on Latvia, because why not? We can take them both. See, my troops have military access in the United Kingdom. And the rest of them will suffer attrition, but these guys will not. We're going to order 66, the United Kingdom, all of the Allies, in fact. And that should actually let us join the Axis as a non-aligned country. Also, let's start building forts on the Soviet border. I have some tricks up my sleeve. We can uh, slow down the Soviet attack. We can actually make it impossible for them to attack us. But we'll get back to that later. Danzig or war? Uh, um, you know, Adolf, it's just a piece of land. You can have it if you want. Let's make a deal. Now, we might have a hard time getting back home because we kind of need um, permission from Turkey to get over here. We will not accept eastward expansion because this gives us fascist support and we have to stay neutral. Okay, Germany attacked the Benelux. I don't think I'll get a piece of France. I think they'll be dead before my war goal is ready. If I defeat them too quickly, they won't be able to call in their dominions and I want their dominions. The Soviet Union is just fighting against me. Let's see what they're doing exactly. That's a lot of provinces. Stanislavov, Lvov, Volny, Polesie. That is over 200 days. And the funny thing is, I can actually stop them doing that, if I so choose. Um, it's enough for me to release puppets to invalidate this war goal, and I might just do that. Ah, they're inviting me to their faction. No, thank you. I have already been in your faction. And why are we going against the British? Well, it is a bit sad, but we have to do it just to get Germany to become our ally. Come on, France, hold out two more months. It is unlikely, but this way we would get a piece of you. Stalin questions Polish sovereignty. Meanwhile, Poland questions Joseph's right to exist. That's a pity. I was hoping to get a bit of France. Again, not that important. I'm more interested in actually becoming friends with Germany than in getting territory from the Allies. With the Allies taken out, we can pretty much expand wherever we want. Yeah, I could have timed it better. Started just fighting the war goal earlier. It's fine though. Are there no British troops here? Sure looks like it. Oh no, there are some. Very, very few. Finally, our justification is complete. Let's declare war on Lithuania. That should call in the Brits. And automatically order 66 the Brits. Brits? Brits? That's weird. Maybe the one against Latvia will work. I guess I can still declare war against France. They have to hold some territory. Tidy. Fantastic. The Brits should have been called in. Let's do the best guns with the bonus and modernize our armies. Let's check on the Soviet Union. Still a lot of time, and Lithuania is ours. Let's just take all states for now. You guys get ready to take on Latvia. You disappoint me, Chamberlain. You did not even join the war. I could still join your faction. Ah, justification on Tahiti is ready. Let's declare war on France. How about now, Britain? Will you join them now? Finally, thank you very much. Now, we could easily destroy them now. They are not defended at all. However, we don't want to. Nope, stop it. We're going to need to hold these guys a little bit. Because I need to wait for the UK to call in all of uh, their subjects and allies. Also, an offer to join the Axis. Gladly. I accept. Now, where were we? Oh yeah, I need to hold them. Because we can't defeat the United Kingdom too quickly. We do have the upper hand. We hold all the ports. Uh, we will have supplies and all that, and but they did bring in some troops, they did deploy some troops in London. Mm, again, we will be able to take them easily, but we don't want to do so yet. We need all of the Dominions to be involved. We still need South Africa, British Raj and British Malaya. Dutch East Indies, it's not that important. Oh, we actually almost took out Canada with the troops we had here. Cool! And they're super weak troops. Should have sent some to the other side. Canada would have capitulated to us. South Africa has been called in. Okay. And capitulated immediately. Raj. Now the justification is complete. I suppose I can declare war. No harm in that. Well, not to us. And let's justify another one. Now, I know I could just join the Germans' war. But then our troops would automatically get exiled. And that's not acceptable. We only have 4% war score. 
even though we're doing most of the work. Volunteers from the Spanish shore. Australia, who are we missing? Um, nobody, that's everyone. Okay, I guess we can take out the United Kingdom now. Just let our guys do their thing. They will take care of everything. And there go the eyes. Unfortunately, we did not have a lot of war participation and the Axis took almost everything. That's a pity, isn't it? I really wanted to take a ran for myself. Hey, maybe we can do a naval invasion. Honestly, I was hoping to get a little bit more at least, but it's fine. We don't mind the Axis being strong. We'll take one bit in India and some more in Canada. Some more bits in India then. The lead drives a hard bargain. Oh, and a bit here, perfect. That will have to be enough. That is the end of the Allies. Pretty early, isn't it? And yes, Germany took almost everything, even though I did all of the work. But what we got in return is a membership, so we can now safely fight the Soviets without having to worry too much. You know what, I wanted to invade the United States now because they're particularly weak right now. We're actually stronger militarily uh, than the United States. So I was thinking I'd invade them, but then I realized I don't have to. We're just going for the achievement. I'm gonna do this as easily as I can. Let's justify a war goal on Iran. Oh, I have an ongoing war goal justification on Estonia. Oh, I'm still at war. I'm still at war with Australia. I'm, how did I miss that? Are my troops still in Australia? Yes, they are. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm actually at war with Australia. I don't need to fight, say, Estonia. In fact, I don't really need to fight anyone. Let's cancel the justification on Estonia and start one on Iran. 90 days. I can work with that. Now, our biggest army group is going to take on Iran from German territory. We will have to call in Germany, but we must make sure that we do most of the work ourselves. Let's be super aggressive and send tons and tons of troops here. Whoops! The Soviet Union declared war on Germany. An interesting turn of events. Now we really have to make sure we're not at war with the Soviet Union. Then again, if I attack Iran, they might join the common turn. This breaks my plans completely. Can I do naval invasions? Maybe I can make this work. Let's quickly research landing crafts. Perhaps I can do a naval invasion of Iran. I do have a tiny navy that might just be enough for this. Yugoslavia joined the common turn. Okay. Now this is an interesting setup. We could easily beat up the Soviet Union together, uh, but we don't want to. Not really. We have almost everything that we need. I'm actually going to hire a naval researcher to speed up that naval invasion. I think I can make this work. We will declare war on Iran. Then they should join uh, the Allies. This way they won't be able to join uh, the common turn. But for that I need to keep Australia alive, but um, seems like they're not going anywhere. They're actually retaking territory. 40 more days. Check on the Soviet Union. Yeah, I'll just release puppets. I don't need to fight the Soviets. Now, if we successfully make them join the Allies, or what's left of them, I don't even need to rely on the naval invasion. We can just attack from German territory, because they will not join the Comintern once they've joined the Allies. But we'll see how that works out. Justification is complete. Let's immediately declare war on Iran. Okay, they should join the Allies. They have joined the Allies. Perfect. Now, we are in a bit of a pickle, because not all of our troops are here, and the Germans might still get war score. No, we, we are getting most of it. We'll be all right. Many of our troops are still in transit, but this will be sufficient. We can now destroy Australia. Okay, once we have Iran, all we need to do is be at war with Italy and have troops in specific provinces in Italy. I don't remember which ones. But remember, we're just doing this for the achievement. Let's check on the Soviet Union. Whew, seven days left. Good thing I remembered to check. So, they are justifying on Stanislaw, Lvov, Vojny and Polesie. To remedy that, all we need to do is... Release them as puppets. We're going to release Republic of Belarus as a puppet and do the same to the Republic of Ukraine. Also release as puppet. Wonderful. The Soviet justification will be invalidated now. See, it disappeared. We can always annex them later if we so choose. 71% participation. We don't actually need to defeat Iran. We just need to defeat Australia because they're the faction leader now. And we have already fought. Yeah, there we go. Now, the most important part, we need Hamadan. I think. Just to be safe, let's take all of Iran. Well, most of it at least. And turn. Italy took some. I think I have what I need. Take some Australian territory. We have almost everything we need. To reiterate, for the achievement to fire, we need artillery modernization. Check. We need to be neutral. Check. We need Hamadan. 
it's ours. Now, we also need to have troops in Italy, in Tuscany, Abruzzo or Latium. We'll have lots in all of these places very soon. And of course, also be at war with Italy. Let's garrison these three bits with our troops. Let's also garrison Hamadan, because we need to control it. And put some troops on the border with Italy, just in case. Now, to be clear, I'm not playing this as a normal game. Otherwise, I would be conquering the United States right now, or fighting the Soviet Union alongside the Germans. And I am doing it for the achievement in the fastest, easiest way I can think of. So we don't care if we lose in the end, I'm not going to secure my country very well and so on. Our troops are all over Italy. Now we need to leave uh, the faction. Let's leave the Axis. Our troops in Italy will try to go home. We have to stop them. Actually, a lot of our troops seem to have a hard time getting home because they're so far away. Okay, the troops in Italy were now stopped. Now we need to attack the Axis. Who should we declare war on? Hungary is 90 days, Germany... Oh, retake core state! 15 days only! Perfect, let's do that! Now, to be perfectly clear, we're gonna lose and be obliterated by the Germans, um, but hey, it's gonna be fun at least. Seems like I didn't actually need to invade Romania or Czechoslovakia at the beginning, but I didn't really have this plan, you know? I actually wanted to beat out the Allies and then take on United States, take out the United States, get all that territory and factories and stuff, then destroy the Soviet Union together with the Germans, and only then turn against the Germans. But halfway through, I figured there's a quicker way to do this. Now, if the event doesn't fire, well, that's a different story, then we'll just lose the game. Let's double-check the event that we're waiting for. Is Poland? Check. Focus. Artillery modernization complete. Check. Neutral. In other words, non-aligned. Yes. At war with Italy? To be soon. Not in the faction of the Soviet Union? Correct. Has divisions in either? Um, well, these places. Hamadan is controlled by a nation that is at war with Italy. Is Poland or in faction with Poland? Meantime, it happened one day. Okay. Everything checks out. Let's declare war on Germany and be defeated. We have divisions in German territory. Where? Let's see. You. You're in German territory. Disband. Can I declare now? Yes, I can. Okay, let's declare war on the Germans. Poland declared war on Germany. Now, to be clear, we're gonna lose this and we're gonna die. I didn't even prepare proper defense. But we're gonna get the bear and that is all that matters. Italy has been called in. My troops are here. Come on. Mean time to happen one day. We needed to fire before we are defeated. Oh, come on. Where is my event? Yes. Here it is. Wojtek never drops a crate. Uh, this is an important event and a rare one, so I'm gonna read it out. Private Wojtek has proven himself a uniquely valuable member of our supply lines. Even during the heat of combat, small arms fire brushing the hair on his head, arms and legs, he did not drop a single crate of munitions. This brave soldier ensured our artillery could keep firing and was thereby instrumental in defeating the enemy. As a result of this, it has been decided that Wojtek should be promoted. Wojtek was an actual bear. Wojtek becomes Corps Commander. And have a look. General Wojtek, the bear. Bearer of artillery. Artillery attack plus 15%. Now we're gonna make him a field marshal. What skills can we give to the bear? Offensive doctrine, why not? Now that this has happened, I can safely surrender because we have achieved what we wanted. And that's it. That's how you get the achievement. We are about to capitulate to Germany. I know, I didn't play this properly, but you gotta admit, that was quite a quick and easy way to get the achievement. Again, I figured this out halfway through, so you can't completely ignore the war against Czechoslovakia and Romania. Just build up your armies and go straight after the Allies. Then take Iran and turn against Italy. Of course, you can do this properly, even this way. Now, if I was playing this as a normal game, so the achievement was not our primary focus and we actually wanted to win, um, what I would do is attack the United States right after we defeated the Allies, because we were actually stronger than them at this point. We would take over the United States, I would either puppet them or annex their territory for factories, or, you know, you can do both, you can puppet half a country. With that industrial base, we would fight the Soviet Union with the German help, because we already managed to join the Axis as a neutral country. In the middle of that, we would also declare war on Iran, so that we can take over uh, the territory we needed. After the Soviet Union was defeated, we were going to build up our forces very, very strongly, get lots of support companies and super duper extra awesome stuff, and just straight up attack the Axis and defeat them properly. But 
Apparently you don't need to. I'm sure some of you will love this uh, cheesy approach and some of you will hate it. Make sure to let me know in the comments which way you prefer. Do you prefer it when I just play a normal game and take care of everything and sort of do the achievement on the way to victory while playing properly? Or something like this, where I just focus on getting the event, the achievement itself and nothing else. And here is uh, the achievement. Gain Wojtek as commander. It's not Wojtek, it's not Wojtek, it's Wojtek. You can pronounce it as Voy, as in V-O-Y, dash tech, as in technology, Wojtek. That is as close as you'll get to the Polish pronunciation. It's, um, it's a short term of the name Wojciech. I've heard that translates to the English name Adalbert, but I don't see how or why it would. And again, this is an actual true story that a bear was trained by the soldiers to carry ammunition. Read up on it, it's a really cool story. So again, what do you prefer? Do you prefer it when I play a normal game, or do you prefer it when I cheese it a little bit and just go straight for the throat of the achievement? And also let me know what you would like me to do next. I do have some ideas, but the suggestions from you can be quite refreshing. Let's have one last look at Wojtek the bear. One attack, zero everything else. Well, oh right, yeah, he's been recently promoted, that makes sense. Definitely the best commander in the entire game. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this little video, and I will see you again soon. Goodbye.